What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to do a video that people have been asking for forever. I'm going to cover tail scale setup installation, both on TrueNOS through the Community Apps Catalog and through Dockage. So hang on tight because what we're going to do is we're going to start with tail scale right here in this window. Eventually we're going to get to a place where I'm going to jump on my phone and I'm going to actually connect back to my TrueNOS box on tail scale all in one video. So we're going to start right now. The first thing I want to do is come over here and create a data set for tail scale. So I'm going to select the configs directory that I've made. I'm going to add a data set. I'm going to call it tail scale. Uh, and I'm going to leave the data set genetic as generic. And the reason for that is tail scale is going to run as root. It's not going to run as apps like a normal app would. So we're going to need to change this here. We're going to need to edit this. And now the, even though root has read and write permissions, I'm going to allow this for everyone for two reasons. Uh, one, because it's running as root here on this box. And two, because when I run this through dockage, I want to make sure that the dockage user is not going to be locked out of here permissions wise. So now that I have that, I can go over and launch the app. I'm going to start with dockage. Dockage is going to be a pretty straightforward way. This is going to be tail scale. So I got this from the wiki. You guys can head over to the wiki and grab the Docker Compose file. I just did a straight copy and paste right here. I'm going to show you guys the only things you're going to want to change. First thing you want to do is change your TS auth key. They're going to give this to you. I'm going to show you how to generate this in a minute. And you're going to want to change your TS routes. Note on the auth key, you guys might be thinking, why are you showing me your authorization key? The reason is you can generate many of these. So I'm going to delete this one and generate a new one after this video. So this auth key is going to be defunct by the time you guys ever see it. So don't worry about that. The TS routes, this is important. So you'll notice here that uh, whatever server I'm going to connect to this, uh, whatever device, in this case my TrueNAS device, I want to put in the network down here. So you'll see my TrueNAS is at 10.99.0.191. What I want you to do is I want you to ignore that this last what they call octet, this last little dot. So I want you to look at these first three numbers, 10.99.0. Yours it might be 10.0.0 or 192.168.1 or whatever it is. I want you to take those first three numbers, I want you to put them down here. Then I want you to put dot zero slash 24. The dot zero slash 24 is not going to change. What's going to change is these first three numbers depending on what you your local uh, server is running on. So this is dockage running on my TrueNAS uh, uh, 1099.191. So I'm going to deploy this. And now we're started and we're up and running. So now we're going to go over to tail scale. Now again, I already have my auth key. I'm going to show you guys how to get an auth key right now. We're going to head over to tailscale.com. I want you guys to click log, get started. It's free and it's going to ask you to log in. You're going to have to pick a provider. In this case, I just use my GitHub, but you can use your Google or Microsoft or whatever you guys want to use. I'm going to use my GitHub. I'm going to authorize tailscale. And now I'm in. And you can already see my machine is here because I've already set this up and testing before I did this. But when you come here for the first time, you're going to have to go to settings and then you're going to have to go to keys down here. And then you're going to show this key here. So this is a reusable key. You're going to generate an off key. All right. And you, what you want to do is you want to hit the reusable button. And then I don't want you to touch anything else and then touch generate key. And now it's going to pop up and show you this key. And now it says here, be sure to copy your new key below. It will not be shown in full again. If you fail to copy this, you're going to have to revoke your key and start all over again on all your devices. So make sure to copy this and save it somewhere useful. So I'm done here. Once you have that key, you're going to want to copy it. And that's when you're going to go back to dockage, insert your TS key, and then you guys will be able to click deploy and you'll be up and running. So this is my machine. It's up and running. I want to make a few changes here and I'm going to show you guys some things that it's possible to do. I want you guys to come over here to this three dot. And I want you to go to uh, disable key expiry. Uh, that's really good. So now your expert disables this. This means that your key won't disable in 90 days. The idea is this device never needs to re-authenticate, which is good because in 90 days, I don't want my VPN to just magically die. So that's the first thing I want you to do. And I want you to come down here and edit route settings. Now, this gives you the ability to do two things. Right now, as it stands, if I type, if I, I'm on my, I have my phone on and I'm not connected to my Wi-Fi and I went to the, and I connect to uh, my tailnet, I'll be able to go to this address, 100.104.115.90, to get to my TrueNOS machine. And you might be thinking, my TrueNOS machine is not on 100.104.115.90. It's on 1099.0.191. Well, that's the case in the event that I just want to go to that single endpoint using my tailnet. If I was, I'll show you guys right now, for example, I'm going to connect to my tailnet over the phone. And I'm going to connect to TrueNOS. Okay, so I now have my phone connected and you can see it's at 100.92.29.84. So here I also want to disable key expiry. There we go, so this means I never have to sign in ever again. 
So now if I'm on my phone and I'm on, I'm not on my Wi-Fi, I'm out somewhere in the world, I can go to the single address and reach my Trinos box. Now, there's more than just my Trinos running on. So for example, I have different apps on my Trinos and things like that. I also have different items on my network. I have more than one Trinos machine. I also have Proxmox running out of the virtual machines. So right now, if I went on my phone to 100.104.115.90, the only thing I would be able to reach would be what is ever on my TrueNOS machine. So any apps that are running on TrueNOS, in this case, I activated Dozzle just so I can test it out. Uh, any of these apps that are running in Dockage or in my apps right here, for example, I'd be able to reach any of these that were up and running by going to the address 100.104.115.90. Now, the problem with this is, again, I have a lot of other machines. So if, say I want to reach another machine through my TrueNOS box. Where it, that's what I would want to come down here and I want to edit route settings and I want to click this little box to publish this route. If I were to click save here and publish this route, I can reach anything on the 10.99.0 network. So my other TrueNOS machine at 10.99.0.200, my Proxmox at 10.99.0.201, all those things would be reachable by, by doing my subnet routes like that. This is the equivalent of a split tunnel. And if you watch the other video I just made on WireGuard, uh, I've talked all about the difference between split tunneling and full tunneling. This is gonna give me a split tunnel to the 10.99 network while allowing any other traffic from my phone to exit directly to the greater internet. Now, I don't have to do that. I have the option to do a full tunnel. So I can come down here and I can use this as an exit node. So if I'm using it as an exit node, in this case, uh, all of my traffic from my phone is going to go to my TrueNOS machine and then it's going to exit out to the greater internet. So I have the option here of going split tunnel, full tunnel, uh, or in this case, both, where I can just do the 1099 network and I can do everything. So I usually don't like to do full tunnels because that's a lot of traffic to route through there. Now, if I wanted the protection of a full VPN, in this case, maybe I want to change... Uh, and go through a full tunnel because I want to mess with the geolocation feature. For example, if I'm in California, but I'm using a full tunnel and my server's in New York, everything on my phone would think that I'm in New York right now because I'm channeling all of my traffic as an exit through an exit point in New York. So that'll just show you guys the options here to do split tunneling and full tunneling. Most people are going to want to do at least split tunneling. This will allow me to reach everything in my home net. Um, but if not, if you're just like, hey, I just want to only reach my TrueNAS box, uh, you would just leave that there. So now we can see both of these devices here. Uh, on my phone, it's very simple to do. You just download the TailScale client and log in. And once you're logged in, make sure when you see your device come up, you do your expiry for your key so you don't have to keep logging in every single time. So that's how we're gonna do it on Dockage. Now I'm gonna stop and inactivate this because we're gonna do the same thing on TrueNOS. Let's jump over here to TrueNOS. Let's go to my apps catalog. We're gonna discover apps. We are gonna type in TailScale. And I'm gonna do this one right here. We're gonna install this and we're gonna make some changes here. So my auth key, again, I'm going to come back here and take the same auth key that I had before, which I'm going to revoke after this video is done, so I don't care, like that. This is my auth key, just like that. Uh, auth once, that's fine. I'm going to leave. And, I, and the other thing I want to do is I want to, I'll, 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 I want to check this box for advertise exit node. This is going to allow me to have the option for split tunneling, uh, for full tunneling. Advertise routes is going to be the split tunneling. So I want to add my route here. Again, I'm on the 10.99 network. If you guys are on a different network, I want you to add that. Remember, it's going to be 0.0 slash 24. First three numbers, then 0.0 slash 24. This is split tunnel. This is going to allow me to use the full tunnel option. I want to have both options. So I'm going to come all the way down here. I'm going to change my tail scale storage to my host path. It's going to be mount, tank, configs, tail scale, just like that. I'm not going to do any additional storage. And then I'm just going to click install. So now we should be up and running and you guys will see this machine jumped on. Look at that. So TrueNOS scale, this is the original TrueNOS machine I added. I'm gonna actually pull this machine out. I don't want it to get confused. Uh, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to disable key expiry. So it only has to log on once. And then I'm gonna change the route setting. So now you see I have two options. I have my split tunnel here that was entered when I did the setup and I have the exit node full tunnel option. So there we go. That's how I added the machine. Everything is managed through the TailScale website. This is not managed on your home lab. Uh, the only the exit node is basically, or the endpoint, I should say, is managed on the home lab. Everything else goes from the TailScale login page. So it was pretty simple to do. And the nice thing about the TailScale login page is, of course, you're not hosting it. So it doesn't go down when your internet goes down. 
So that's a really cool way to do things. There's a lot of other options here, guys. I mean, there's apps and services and users and control. There's a ton that I can do for this video. I just wanted to get you guys set up and going with TailScale because so many people have asked me about TailScale and using it as a VPN uh, versus WireGuard and using WGEasy, which is what I personally use. This is pretty magical. That was kind of insane how easy it was. You literally just add the endpoint to whatever device you want to add and then log in and in this case to my GitHub account and it just pops up right here. Simple as that. So that's really cool and I really like it a lot. So I hope you guys really like this video. If you have questions, please uh, ask them in the comments section. If you have very technical questions, please ask them in Discord. Uh, if you want to support this channel, please like and subscribe to this video. And if you really want to support me personally as a creator, thank you guys so much. Please buy me a coffee.